Well, with molarity and replacement reactions, we've already talked about both of these things, which is nice. However, we haven't talked about molarity in terms of stoichiometry and the replacement reaction. That's just another type of reaction that's taking place. Recall back when we were talking about single replacement reactions where I think this is a piece of copper wire and it's placed into a solution of silver um, iodate and then the silver comes out of solution as the copper goes into solution. So that's what that picture is trying to show there. Nothing really extraordinary in regards to what's happening with the stoichiometry, but I'm trying to find something of significance which I don't see. So we may just go right to the example and that'll help explain what the heck's going on here. So let's look at example number seven. Example number seven says, in a single replacement reaction, aluminum metal replaces zinc in a zinc nitrate solution. Calculate the mass in milligrams of zinc metal produced in the reaction when 200 milliliters of a 0.44 molar solution of zinc nitrate is reacted with 0.305 grams of aluminum metal. All right, well, here's what I want to do. I want to get rid of this component right here. Okay. Because what this question is doing is asking something that we haven't talked about yet, which is limiting reactants. We'll talk very briefly about simple limiting reactants at the end of this topic. But go ahead and cross off the 0 0.305 grams of aluminum metal. Let's just leave it as aluminum metal. So looking at the, the question here, the nice thing about molarity, when you look at molarity, what are the units again for molarity? Moles over liters. Okay. So, if you know the volume and you know the molarity, what do you always start with? The volume. Because if you know the volume and you know the molarity, then you put the units in, what happens to the units' liters? They cancel out. Cancel out. And you're left with moles. So, that would could be used in step one, or I'm sorry, step two of stoichiometry. Or step one, you write a balanced equation. Step two, change what's given into moles. So, if I gave you a volume and a molarity, and again, we're not using that information, but we have a volume and a molarity. Will that give me a number of moles? Absolutely. Convert the milliliters into liters, and then multiply times the molarity. Units of uh, volume go away. We're left with moles. So this is just another way of determining the number of moles we're doing step two. Now, we've already, if I didn't give you the the volume and the molarity, we could easily change the grams into molarity because we've been, or into moles because we've been doing that. So really, this question isn't as exciting as it was first thought of, but there is a lot of stuff going on here. So let's write out what our reaction looks like. So it says, in a single replacement reaction, aluminum metal replaces zinc and zinc nitrate. Translation, aluminum, zinc nitrate. Okay, so aluminum is going to replace the zinc in the zinc nitrate, all right, but we're not done yet. So let's continue on here. Um, calculate the mass in milligrams of zinc metal produced, and that's what we would expect. The zinc is going to be taken out when 200 milliliters of a 0 0.440 solution of zinc nitrate is reacted with aluminum metal. So what is the other product? Does it even say it in this problem? It's aluminum nitrate, good. So if the aluminum is going to replace the zinc and you don't need your single replacement sheet to determine that, the question says to do that, then we'll go ahead and write it as such. All right, so that's the mechanism that's taking place here. So let's, before we can do step one, we have to make sure our compounds are balanced. What's the charge on zinc? Plus two, right? Charge on nitrate. Negative one. So does that equal zero? No. So we need how many nitrates? Two of those. Okay. So we did the right thing in balancing those charges. And things that stand alone don't have a charge. What's the charge on aluminum? Plus three. Good. Nitrate, still negative one. So how many do we need? Three of those. So before you even start getting coefficient happy and starting writing numbers in front of uh, the compounds or the atoms, make sure that you actually have the right things written down. Hope I can, yeah. 
move you over. Okay, so, and before we even balance it, let's write down what we know. So we know we have 200 milliliters of a 0.44 solution of zinc nitrate. So we have 200 milliliters of a 0.44, and that's molar. And the question wants to know, what is the mass in milligrams? Okay, so the mass in milligrams. All right, so we finally have what we know written above. Is this balanced? No, not even close. We have at least two nitrates here and three there, so let's go ahead and put a three and a two there. So the nitrates, the NO3s are balanced. How do I balance the others? Put a two there and a three there, good. All right, so that's kind of a little involved, step one, but that's still step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, take what's given and convert it into moles. And we just talked about that a second ago, so you know the volume and the molarity, we do. Then we start with our volume. Convert that into liters. And remember, there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. Then multiply that times the molarity, which is 0 0.440 moles. So all of that is step two. Take what's given, convert it into moles. Then we want to get rid of, and again, this is of our zinc nitrate. So we want to get rid of the unit moles of zinc nitrate. And what are we looking for? Looking for zinc. So we want to put the moles of zinc on top. And what numbers go for the zinc and the zinc nitrate? So the zinc nitrate is a three, and the zinc is a three. Okay. So go back to your balanced equation to determine that. Now the question wants us to get to milligrams, so how the heck do we do that? Good, so convert the moles to grams and then the grams to moles. Isn't this a fun one? Holy cow. What's the molar mass for zinc? 65, 3.9, thank you. And then the last step, how many, or who's bigger, grams or milligrams? Grams. Good. And how many milligrams in a gram? A thousand, 10 to the three. Look at that. Anybody, anybody get a number? 5,754? 5, yeah. And that's milligrams. Yeah. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Now, this one's a little bit different than the previous one, even though I gave a mass and told you to ignore it. This one, we don't want to ignore the mass. You'll see here shortly. So example number eight says 325 grams of lead metals mixed with 3.45 molar solution of iron 3 nitrate. <coughs> Calculate the volume in milliliters of the iron 3 nitrate needed to completely react with all of the lead metal in the single replacement reaction. So let's do step one, write a balanced equation. So again, it says that we have lead metal is mixed. How do I represent lead metal? Good is mixed with 3.45 molar solution of iron 3 nitrate. So what's the symbol for iron? That's E and nitrate, again, we just did. Okay, so it's another single replacement reaction. Calculate the volume of the iron 3 nitrate, completely react with the lead metal. It doesn't even tell you what the products are. So what are the products here? PBNO3 and So we're going to assume that it does take place, even though you're not using your single replacement sheet. Okay, so let's write down some charges. So what's the charge on iron in the iron three nitrate? Very good, so it's a plus three charge. And we said nitrate was negative one, so we need how many nitrates? Three. Good, it wasn't three because of the three there. Okay. Um, hmm, lead, what are the possible charges for lead? Four and two, what do you want to go with? Two. two, that's a good one. That's a really most popular type actually, so good choice. 
and nitrate's still negative one, so that means we need two of those. All right, so we have our formula balanced. Let's write down what we know. We had 325 grams. Oops. We had 325 grams of lead, and we it's mixed with a 3.45 molar solution. But the question's asking what? So it wants to know. Let's scoot you down just a little. Whoa. Wants to know how many milliliters. Oh boy. Oh boy. So it gave us a mass for lead and it gave us some molarity for the iron nitrate, but it's asking for the volume. So let me ask you this. Do we know the volume and molarity? No. Okay. Since we do not know the volume and the molarity, don't you dare try to start with that. Okay. In other words, whatever we're working with has to be able to be converted to moles. We can't do that. Yes, it is moles over liters, but we don't have a volume to cancel out the other volume to be left with moles. Can we change grams into moles? Yeah. You better believe it. So that's what we're going to start with. So if you're asked a question like this, you're going to save molarity for last. Okay? Don't even think about starting with it, unless you have the volume and the molarity, or you know it. So let's start with what we know. We had three. Oh, do we balance this? Yeah, so what do we need to do? Sorry. Two there, three, three, three there, two and a three there. So step one, write a balanced equation. Good. Step two, let's take what we know we can change into moles. So 325 grams of lead, and the molar mass for lead is what? 207. Point what? Two? Okay. So again, that we can convert into moles. So step two, change what's given. That can be changed into moles. Into moles. Step three, we need to get rid of the moles of lead. And what are we looking for? Iron nitrate, right? So we need to find the volume for that. So we'll put moles of iron nitrate up there. Okay. And what numbers go in front of those? So two and a three, good. So if we stopped right here, we would have our moles of iron nitrate. Now, recall that when you look at 3.45 molar, that means that we have 3.54 moles for every liter, right? Sure is yes, okay? Now, we need to find the volume. And if it's not the unit that we're looking for, what do we do with the unit? Move it diagonally. So we're going to take this moles of iron nitrate and we're going to move it diagonally. Okay. And if we're looking for volume, isn't it nice to have a volume unit on top? Yeah. So what you're doing is you're actually taking this and inverting it. We're going to let the units invert this for us. So we're going to put the three point four or five down here, and what are we going to put on top if we invert that? Liters, which is the volume. Very good. So when you're given a molarity, but you're not given a volume for it, you're going to invert the molarity. That's one reason why we never show, when we're doing the calculation, we never put a capital M within the problem. It's always moles per liter, because we will need to flip that every once in a while. So if I stop right there, I have my volume in liters, but what is it wanted in? Milliliters. So again, move that unit diagonally. Which one's bigger, a liter or a milliliter? And how many milliliters in a liter? There you go. So really, when you're looking at this problem, you're saving that for last because you don't have a volume. So don't try to start with that. The only time you can do that is if you have a value that you know, like we did back here where we had the volume, we had the molarity, that's what you're going to start with. Okay. And let's get a number here. Anybody get a value? 303? Yeah. yeah, I like that. Okay. That's not too bad. 